we are going to look at the forces acting on a, a, a charged particle as it moves through, through an electric field and a magnetic field. We have a negatively charged particle entering region 1. In region 1 we've got an electric field directed upward and a magnetic field directed out of the board. So first let's determine the direction of the forces that each field will apply to the charge because ultimately we want to do this. We want to figure out what the velocity is that the particle must have in order for that particle to pass straight on through region 1. Let's look at the electric field first. An electric field direction indicates how a proton is going to move or a positively charged particle will move in that field. Well, we've got just the opposite. Therefore, this charged particle will not move upward as a positively charged particle will. It will move downward. So if this particle moves straight on through like this, the entire time there will be an electric force acting on it in the downward direction. To determine the direction that the magnetic force will be acting on it, we need to use either the left or right hand rule. Well, it's a negatively charged particle, therefore we're going to use our left hand. So, you got to direct your thumb with the velocity of the particle and the fingers in the direction of the magnetic field coming out of the board. So, thumb that way, fingers out this way, the palm is facing upward, so that's the direction of the magnetic force acting on the particle as it goes through region 1. So in order for this to pass straight on through, these must cancel each other out. The net force on the particle must be 0. So let's figure out what V is. Magnetic force must equal the electric force. From equations that we've worked with, we know that the magnetic force is going to be equal to the charge times the velocity times the magnetic field value. The electric force is equal to the charge times the magnitude of the electric field. The charges cancel out. We can rearrange this to derive an equation to solve for the velocity required. Velocity equals the electric field divided by the magnetic field value. If we use the metric values, we'll get an answer in the proper metric units. Uh, the electric field is given here, 6,000 newtons per coulomb. The magnetic field is 0.14 tesla. That gives us a velocity of 42,900 meters per second. Alright, now, when this particle passes straight on through, goes through this opening, it will go into region 2. And in region 2, there's only a magnetic field, no electric field. Therefore, it will still have a, an upward magnetic force acting on it. And we've got to figure out, uh, the first of all, the path that the particle is going to follow. So it's going to come through like this, because there's no net force here. And because there's an upward magnetic force acting on it, it's going to start deflecting upward. And it'll keep on deflecting inward towards the center of this circular path that it's going to follow. Just to let you know that that's truly the case, if we look at the um, point where it's over here, there will be a magnetic force in that direction. You can use the left hand rule here because it's a negatively charged particle. So we've got um, the magnetic field coming um, out of the board, the particle's moving that way. So let's set up our left hand that way and end up with a force in the correct direction. The force will be directed in, inwards towards the center of the circular path that it's following. So we need to find the radius of that path that it's going to follow. So we want to find what R is. We'll 
call that the center there. Like we said, the magnetic force equals the centripetal force in that case. They're one and the same. We know this again is QVB. The equation for centripetal force is MV squared over R. We can rearrange this to solve for R. One of the velocities will drop out over here, this one will drop out. We can bring R over to this side, bring QB over there, you'll have R equals MV divided by Q times B. And if we know the mass of the particle, which is given as 9.2 times 10 to the minus 26, And the velocity that we calculated up here the charge is also given it's negative 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs so it must have three electrons to it and we're actually looking for the um, uh, we use the absolute value of the charge so that would just be a positive value. And the magnetic field again is 0.14 Tesla. It's the same in both regions. So once you do the math on that, we end up with a, a radius of 0 0.059 meters, which is 5.9 centimeters. So that would be the radius of that circular path that the particle follows in that magnetic field. This is the process or uh, the, the equipment setup that's used in what's called a mass spectrometer to get um, particles of a certain velocity to head on through here and depending on their mass they'll follow a certain uh, radius when they get through here and once they do that you, you can set an opening let's say at a certain point a certain distance away from the entry point and um, get, collect the particles that you want that have that particular charge and that particular mass.